So today I wanted to do a quick video about trowel technique. So I've already built one of these pillars before. I've got a video for that where I go over kind of the whole process in detail. Um, so I'm not going to just repeat that whole thing as far as just building a 16 by 16 pillar. But uh, today I'm going to just cover different aspects of trowel technique and kind of show, show how that works. Uh, and additionally, I'm going to kind of tell you a, a quick story um, about how when I first started laying and how much I struggled with it. And hopefully that way it'll make things easier for you guys um, to understand that there's a lot of technique and uh, it takes time to learn this. So <clears throat> if you don't want to watch or listen to the story, that's fine. I'll leave a card that says when you can fast forward to. That way you don't have to listen to the story and be bored by that. Uh, really appreciate all the subscriptions, uh, all the comments, and uh, be sure to continue to uh, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, it means a lot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this then. <clears throat> So when I got out of high school in 1998, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I went ahead and called my mom's friend whose husband owned a construction company. I didn't know what type of construction they did. And uh, turns out it was a bricklaying company. So I gave him a call. His name's Jim. Started out there as a laborer. Um, obviously, I knew nothing about the trade. And... Uh, <clears throat> nice thing was they they taught you everything you needed to know um, and when you showed up you were just a laborer and uh, it was very very much a hierarchical system where when you were the newest guy had the worst job and normally the hardest job and you started at the bottom and worked your way up So my second summer that I was working there, I was still only laboring, wasn't doing any bricklaying. And it was a Saturday morning, and one of the bricklayers had called off. So they told me to get my tools and I was gonna get a lay today. And I was so excited. I was thinking this is, this is my chance. I'm gonna be better than some of these losers. I'm gonna get in here today, lay these 12 inch block, and I won't ever have to labor again. Well, I was very wrong. Um, I had been watching bricklayers for about a year and a half, two years, and I thought I had, I'd be able to just step up and be a great bricklayer. But the truth is, it was a lot harder than they all made it look. So they put me on an outside porch wall at footer level. So basically none of it would be seen. It would be backfilled on both sides. It's just there for structural, structural support. And one of the laborers got me all set up got some mud out there and I couldn't spread it I couldn't get get my head joints to stick couldn't keep the block up to the line couldn't get them down to the line it was honestly one of the most frustrating things I've ever done that first day because I thought I was ready. I didn't think I was going to have any problems with it. And uh, I was wrong. So that got me thinking for these video purposes. What do, what do I need to do to make it so if you want to lay, lay brick, lay block, how could it be easier? Well, the biggest thing is trowel technique.
If you don't understand the technique, it's incredibly difficult. And then also related to trout technique is good mud. You gotta have a good mixture. If your mud's too soft, too dry, too wet, not enough mortar, too much mortar, you're gonna completely struggle. So, my first 16 by 16 block pillar build video, I do a pretty good job of covering what's too wet, what's too stiff, and what good mud looks like. So if you haven't checked that out, give that a look. Because consistency of your mud is incredibly important. You can't do this stuff your mud's not where it needs to be. So one of those things which I'm doing right now, wasn't even thinking of, is my mud, it started to get spread out. As you use it, it spreads out. Well, when it spreads out, you, get, you end up with all these little clumps. You end up with little clumps on the sides and they start to dry out more. And it's inconsistent. So, while I'm laying, when the mud starts to get spread out, I'll pile it back up. And that makes it so you can work with it for longer. So the first thing we're going to go over here is spreading. When you go to spread, you take the trowel in. And you give it a pack. It's going to end up looking like that. So that's where you want the mud at. And that pack makes it so mud will when you move it around, it stays put. So, yeah, and that's, that's what I'm going to spread, just like that. So I'm going to get a trowel full of mud, come over and you set it, and it's kind of just balanced right there, sitting on this portion of the trowel. You're going to set it down, and you flip it. You flip and drop, so that it goes down like this. Trowel's here. Good morning. So again, you set it at the corner, and you're gonna twist and spread. A lot of times I'll cut across here and get any that extra mud that's hanging over off, because it's gonna end up falling off anyhow. Sometimes when people are doing something like this, they'll just throw a glob of mud down like that, which that'll work, but I like to spread the whole wet. That way when the block sits across here, there'll be mud to support it the whole way. It makes for a stronger, stronger bond and it holds better and it's easier to level it. So. That's why I spread that whole web. So when you're cutting that mud clean, you're feeling for a lift here.
Now, before you butter a block, you're gonna tap it down and get a trowel full just like you do for your spread. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You can do it with force or you can do it with technique. And I like to do a combination of the two. So I spread and then that's quick. And that'll hold it there. So you kind of smear it. And then you do that real quick and it'll stick. Another thing that's important is to work off of a mud board. Sometimes I'll work out of a wheelbarrow, but it really is better to have a mud board. And all you really need is a piece of plywood. It needs to be plywood, not OSB. It helps keep your mud together, gives you something to work off of. Another thing is, I always use the material board where I'll set this up and I'll have a nice spot for all my material to sit. That way you're not struggling with stuff like that. So when I spread that web, what I do is I, I push the mud down and I come from underneath of it. See how I cut right where where I started my my push. So you push down, come underneath it, and you, you get a nice clean amount there. And then what you can do with that is you get some momentum, and you can just throw it. And that's actually the way you spread the brick as well. Do a little cut like that. These are wall ties. They're gonna tie the stone to the block. Make it all one structure. So I was still a little high on this side. So because of that, I'm putting extra mud over here and it's spread much thinner on this side. That way I can get this nice and level. It doesn't have to be level, depending on what you're working on right off the start. A lot of times you're gonna get it within two or two or three courses. You want it to be dead on, both your plum and level. Ideally it's it's right right off the bat. But the reality is your footer most of the time isn't exactly perfect and that makes things a lot harder so a lot of times i'll butter the block that i'm laying and it's just a quick smear and a flick of the wrist and in this one i just throw on and it tends to stick But the first one, that motion that you do to get it on there, you really have to smear it to get it to consistently stick. I mean, obviously there's people that can do it, I'm sure, but until you get it down, why even bother? Because every extra motion you do, you're holding the block while you're doing it. And if you're not holding these block all day, every day, that's hard on you. The 
So now I got this level. Which means it's easier to plumb now. pivot point and you turn to let it run. Place it, bring it down. Smear, tap it out, flick. I just throw that on. And you throw it on that way as well. And a big part of all this is your mud consistency. If your mud's not right, you're going to be fighting all of this. Your mud's too stick, too stiff. There's no way it'll stick when you throw it on.
see how that starts out here. You get you go out and you come back down. You're kind of kind of getting some momentum this way, and then you bring it down and just toss it. Kind of toss it down is the best way to describe it. You're tossing it with your trowel. I like to cover up those wall ties there. Every once in a while, I get to thinking about video stuff and not actually paying attention to what I'm doing. I was thinking about the best angle way to capture butter in this block for you guys because I was thinking about that. Totally set the block down wrong. So, again, this is the same way as if it's in your hand. You're going to smear it. See how you just got a little smear there? Tap, tap your trowel, and it's just a flick. And you can do the same here. If you need to, you can smear it. That'll, that's going to guarantee it's going to stick. So you can do it that way. Like I said before, that second joint, I just throw it on there. So it's just, whoops. Because I, I just got a full trial of mud, it got a little much. Normally, I've already gotten half the, half the mud off on this side. so. But it's just, you come up here and you're, just, you're trying to make this part of your trowel hit that edge of the block. So it's, and this bottom part, when you, you're going to come around and it's going to, because the, the momentum's going to fill the bottom and then the heel of your trowel is going to come up and catch the top. So, I'll show you that again. It's just, you're from the outside. You throw it on. A lot of times, if it looks like it's going to fall, I'll do that, and that little smear is going to keep it holding on there. Recognizing that your joint's about to fall off before you do a movement makes it so you can correct it. But if you see it starting to slouch and you don't do anything about it, it's going to fall off.
So in case you were wondering why I'm wearing one glove, it's not because I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, but I, I can't use the trowel with a glove on. I just can't do it. I lose all that feel and there's a lot of connection with your hand to your trowel. All right guys, well this is bringing us to our last course here. Put it into perspective for you. We're at 36 minutes. Between laboring for myself and talking to you guys, 36 minutes in. So just to give you an idea, I'm not sure how long this is gonna edit down from, but if I, A, wasn't thinking about how to move cameras around and try and capture things and try and explain what I'm doing, probably 20 minutes worth of work. If I was on a job site with a crew, I'd expect this to take about 15 minutes. Definitely a busier location than I thought it was going to be. All right, so there you have it. That's my 16 by 16 pillar. Um, like I said, if you want the actual like explanation of what I'm doing as far as the whole process, uh, I already have a video on that. Um, but today I was trying to really kind of point out the 
the different techniques of how to, how to use your trowel, how to use it to your advantage. Um, and uh, hopefully that will help some of you guys out. Hey guys, one other thing I wanted to go over here real quick. I get tons of comments about rebar all the time. Rebar. Why aren't you using rebar? Oh, that's cool, but it's going to fall over because there's no rebar. It's almost as if the rebar industry has paid trolls to come out and talk about rebar. Well, the truth is there's obviously a place for rebar, um, but on something like, like this, it's absolutely not necessary. Um, you know, there's more block work out there without rebar than there is with rebar. So just depends on the application. Um, if you're not sure, you should obviously find out if it's required. Um, but for something like this, no need. I don't even think it would do anything. If this car hits this, it's gonna explode whether it's got rebar or not. So one of the concepts with this is we don't want rebar in it so it does break away and it, it gives the car a chance to keep moving instead of just coming to a dead stop. So that's my take on rebar for these. Um, like I said, if you don't know, you need to find out, but uh, to all the rebar um, paid trolls out there, it's not necessary. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.